So, I decided I'd do a tutorial on how to play Ireland in the Road to 56 mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm going to start off by saying that this is a primarily a defensive support play style. We simply don't have the industry or the manpower to sustain large offences. So, starting off in 1936, Ireland is currently they might have been ruled by Fianna Foyle. And we have a bit of support for the Party Noshita Khorpoja, or the Fascists under Party, and the Party Komenach the Heron, Communist Party, Arkin. There's also um, Party and Lechtabra. I've never seen them show, really show up in this game. We'll ignore them for now. Starting out, we have two significant debuffs. A First Republican army lowers our stability and we gain 0.4 political, less political power per day. Which is not insignificant. We also are suffering from a crippling trade war with the UK, which is screwing over our construction fees, production efficiency, and factory output. Now, these can be fixed, but we have to wait until the election in June of, or July of 1937, so 18 months to go. And I'm just going to quickly go over those now, because that's the main, what really differentiates the Irish focus tree in road to health. The industrial buildup seems to be pretty much generic, same with the naval dockyard. Air Force, Air General. Most of those are pretty normal. There is also this um, Celtic Unification Tree, but I've never tried that. I'm going to tell you how it works. Basically, in order to get that, you do have to um, take over all of Scotland, Wales, Cornwall, Britain, Isle of Man, all of Ireland. Which is quite a bit of effort. Now, the mod does also add an option to actually start with this. I might try that some other time. But going back into the focus tree, by June or July of, 40, of 37, we have to decide between Fina Foil or Fina Gale. Either way, if you are going with Fina Gale, this is basically if you want to go fascist and join the Axis or join the British Commonwealth as a Dominion. Which, um, those are options. I personally prefer to go down this path, the left-hand path here, and negotiate Northern Ireland for assistance. I'll go over that in a bit. If you do go Fianna Gael, and you're going, um, wh whichever path you go down here, Go with this first. It'll get rid of that IRA debuff completely. Then you go into Reclaim Treaty Ports and the Error Act. This will get rid of that um, trade war debuff regardless of what you do. It'll add some factories and a couple of dock dockyard as well. If you're going Fianna Foil, you can't get rid of the IRA on the debuff until you have this Emergency Powers Act. And for that, Britain has to be in a war with either Italy, Germany, France, or the USA. Thing is, though, once you if you do go with this, it'll buff your infantry attack and defense by a significant amount. Ten percent attack and fifty percent defense. That's. I'll go over our military in a bit, but I need a need a handle right now. Basically, that's, that buff would be like having unlocked infantry division, infantry leader, and infantry experts, which require you, that requires you to have gained a thousand combat experience with at least 80% infantry, and then you can select it. Which means, and that would stack on top up of the buff as well, so there's Basically, this gets rid of it instantly. 
This takes longer to get rid of it, but you gain a massive buff in, in exchange. And then if you are going down this way, like, I don't see what... I, I think historically we went down something like this, starting from foreign affairs, we just stayed out of the war entirely. If you're playing this game, I don't see why you do that. This does give us Northern Ireland, which at the time we had a territorial claim on. That gets us some aluminium, some extra population, extra factories, extra dockyards. If you're joining the Allies, this for me is a no-brainer. But you might decide otherwise. If you are going with Fine Gael, you do have to go a bit more to get um get rid of, rid of them. But that's um that's the uh, big decision you'll have to make for everything you do. So, but before, well, we can't do that yet. So usually what I do is I go for the Irish general staff first, then reform, modernization, and motorization. There is a reason for that. You need to get Ford V8 to get some of these industrial things here. Which will get extra factories. The reason I do that is first thing pretty much everyone does in this game is electronic mechanical engineering. A couple of these get the industry up. And then you can either go support equipment or early truck. But you should at least have um have this ready by the time let's see. So that's a hundred and five days. Plus another 70, 175 days. If you um, research early truck now, you should have that in time to, to do it. And it's even quicker if you choose a Mayo. Doesn't matter which one you take, they're pretty much equivalent. So I'll go with just Ford Cork because it has some flavor to it. Now, the main reason I go with this. Uh, like I said, it's to get the Ford V8, mainly so that I have as many of the bonuses for these they, these industrial ones or their prerequisites. They're researched by the time I can have them ready. So I can just chain as many of these together as possible. You can see here, this requires basic machine tools, which we're already researching, but that's going to take a while. Uh, this requires construction one, Again, we're researching that. This does require some, but um, well, these three here require us to have either the, the Americans, Germans, or Soviets in the same, have the same ideology as them, and they must approve of us. However, we do gain an off map factory and a, a research bonus. I usually go with the Americans, because if you're playing historically, that's easiest to get, quickest. You just have to cozy up to them a bit. Again, we also need concentrated industry or dispersed industry too to get any of these. This requires construction three. This requires construction two. So I usually start off with with these because I can. It'll buy me some time to actually research some of these. Or at least some of the prerequisites, and then and then I will have as many of them, and as many of these focuses together as possible. On the naval side of things, I may as well cover this now. Basically, submarines only. Do not bother with a surface fleet until later in the game. Now, you can go with fleet and beam or a raiding fleet. Thing is, if you go with the and beam as in this you can basically get this one first it's kind of not very useful for submarines but these four are very good for subs again there's a there's more available if you go with trade interdiction but the reason i'm going to suggest the lease and beam go back here again this is not really this is nice to have the extra flash experience, but these two, that means we get plus 5% dockyard output. Not bad. 
and this destroyers and convoys will be 10 percent cheaper a lot of what we will be doing is sell it creating and selling or blend leasing convoys just to build up our industry as far as air force goes i usually go with go with develop our own design and then just go on fighters Basically, we don't have the industry to really do tactical bombers or heavy fighters, and we sure as hell can't support strategic bombers. So, fighters with limited cast ability is pretty much the name of the game. So, I'm just going to get started on this now. And here's our single division. It's under strength, and is just very bog-standard infantry division. This isn't bad, it'll do, but it's not great. First thing to do, put them on this train up. Now, two generals we have are Michael Costello, who also has a military high command role as a infantry specialist and as our military theorist. Thing is, he's an old guard, so we do get some extra entrenchment. But he also has this trait that the, um, mod ads division attack on and defense on core territory plus 2.5 percent. that's helpful whereas this guy Hugh, hugo mcneil i tend to use him more as a expeditionary force commander he's only level one but this promising trait means he'll gain experience much faster up until he reaches level three and then naturally field marshal daniel mckenna He's an infantry officer, cautious. Not much to really say here. We can add a couple of traits once we have the once we have the command power. I usually go with defensive doctrine just to give us extra entrenchment. You could also go offensive if you know you're going to be going attack in the attack later. Then charismatic's okay. I think reinforcement rate is. As far as military uh, industry, we're currently producing the good old fashioned smelly. And there's not much difference between these two Mayos. I think they're exactly the same. One just has a name and imply history. Not sure where that magazine for it works is. It might be in. We can also build artillery from the Great War. Again, it'll do the job. And. Civilian trains. Now, our two Mayos are generic train manufacturer for the heavy machinery workshop from the Great Southern Railways, who also do tanks. Doesn't really matter. I generally don't bother with tanks much, so I tend to go with the train manufacturer. But either will work. Plane wise, the only thing we can do are transport planes. I wouldn't bother unless you're going with paratroopers, which I have done. Fun, but we can't do very much of it. We also have no dockyards for now, anyway. And as far as our construction goes, this will add um, was a infrastructure in either in a couple of provinces. Sometimes it'll add two to Leinster, even though we already have four out of five. Minor irritation. And this is going to add to them later, but we don't care about that. Once we get to reveal mineral wealth, we just want those research bonuses. We can't exactly build very quickly because of this um, trade war. So what I usually do is just... And we only have four factories to spare. But the export focus does at least help this trade war. Basically, I just build up infrastructure where I'm not going to get it from this improved straight infrastructure. And then start adding factories. Now, Road to 56 makes them a lot more expensive. But it's worth queuing them up anyway. 
And I'm gonna now that I'm on the building tab, I'm gonna mention something about land forts. The um Axis AI, if you are joining the Allies, seems to enjoy landing in County Wicklow here. Mountainous terrain. They're thinking. But basically I tend to build land forts along the eastern seaboard here. Then a couple along along Munster. Cork, West Cork. I this is the pro provinces don't really map fully to uh, to um violence because this is county part of county Galway, 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 Galway slash Roscommon, Lego, Mayo, Mayo, Mayo might also be here as well, just around the out uh, of Kilbur. But anyway, they always seem to try landing here so that he can get the Porsche. Again, it does kind of make sense that they're going for the Porsche. But a plane, planes provinces will be far better to attack into because less attack penalty. Just something to bear in mind. If, once you have the spare, um, the spare construction and capacity, maybe build a couple of coastal forts along along here. Along this, along this coast, and possibly even a few a land force in Dublin, just for when things inevitably go wrong. Let's see, All right? So I'm gonna get on with things. Ah, oh, yeah. Philosophy of the general staff. As soon as you choose this, you have to pick, take a pick between if you are time with them, which means we get max planning, higher max planning. Or develop them quickly. We get we get our plans done quicker. Now, planning in the in this game only reapplies if you're using the front line or uh, offensive line or spearhead. Your micromanaging doesn't make any difference. Personally, I prefer just to get them done quickly. So now, the uh, general staff. Once this is complete, we gain small amount of xp a day and our planning speed is quicker not by much but just enough to make it it's quicker and there's a lot of twiddling your thumbs waiting for things to happen but like like i said earlier go for this then go for army reform and once you have uh, at least a hot that will unlock training exercises once you have those not showing up here yet, but we'd be able to every so often spend five political power and a hundred infantry equipment for a hundred days, and we would gain ten XP out of that. It's just something to to help build up some XP. And I'm just gonna sh and skip ahead and skip ahead now. And now that we've got the general staff, we have to wait for um for army reform to complete. That'll mean if we use a flash hundred units of infantry equipment and stockpile, and then for a hundred days we gain 0 0.05 per day, so it's up to five XP, and then when removed we gain another five XP. So in total, ten XP, five power, and a hundred infantry. We do have to be at peace, but that's not a problem. See, while I'm at it, I'm going to go through the military staff we have. Now, the first thing that comes that you will notice here is that Michael Brennan, our army offense expert, or one of them, he costs 50 political power. This other one only costs 10 command power, but you do have... But, and he has extra attack. You have to go down the fascist tree for that. Something to bear in mind if you are going that way. For our two defensive experts, I don't think it makes any real difference. Firstly, I prefer to go one or two of these because if you're playing defensively, defense is always good. Also, Michael Brennan, it will be available as if you select him as the chief of, of army, he can't be the bomber interception. Expert. It's up to you which way you go. 
Another thing is that um, Michael Costello, whom we have here, he's an infantry specialist. So if you go with him, we'll buff our infantry division attack even further. But that requires 30 command power and 50 political power. For the chief of navy, two options are a decisive battle act, who buffs screens, capital ships, or a naval aviation expert. These two, I think um, this guy is more useful because we might get screens, we might get capital ships later, or reparations. Carriers, if it gets to the point where I actually do have them, you can change it later. For the Chief of Air Force, our options are extra air superiority or air safety. Either works. Personally, I tend to go with ground support to try and get that extra air superiority. It doesn't really matter too much. For political advisors, some of these guys in the bottom have different names each time. Richard Hayes, John Mulkey, John Charles McCage, Douglas Hyde, Sean Mass, Sean Tiotti. They're all fixed names. I always go with an elusive gentleman just to get once I have an intelligence agency. And then this guy requires you to decide with the uh, Fina Foil. He's a silent workhorse that is just a flash 15% extra physical deck. They're often considered to be one of the single best, if not the best, advisors. Alternatively, if you go down with Fina Gale and Finish explaining the blue shirts. Again, this hardworking politician who doesn't have as much political power gain, but enemy spies will be less efficient. The other two things, I'm not really sure what they're good for. Guaranteeing people, like, I'm not going to take it. This guy requires you to have created an intelligence agency and created a cryptology department. If you can get that, you gain an extra 15% boost, research boost to um, computing tech or products. Might be useful. Some extra description powers as well. Popular figureheads. I don't usually bother unless I absolutely need the extra stability, which might be the case later in the game. Really bother with the smooth talking charmer, but maybe you might find a use for that. I don't. And these guys are just plus up extra support for ideology per day. And then our captive industry. Lots of what I end up doing in the in these playthroughs as Ireland, any nation really is when I've got the spare industrial capacity, I'll build up railways and infrastructure in allied territory to help get supplies through that is probably going to be the best way you can actually play this game as a support for industrial concerns we've got bogs added industrial concern limited johnson like service company this is unique to the mod i think basically extra research speed nice but 15% for synthetic resources. That's helpful because we are going to need to research synthetic oil experiments and um, rubber plants at some point. And then for Myos, then we do have an infantry. There's a couple here that requires to have. Um, Troll Northern Ireland, Mackie and Sons are the only ones under the military material equipment. Under planes, we have Bass, Short Brothers, Antrim Torpedo Factory, who will also be used for buffing screens. Of the two of these, I usually go with multi role aircraft designer because general aircraft designer is just generic. It's just this though adds a bit more flavor and we can customize them just a little bit better. 
The heavy aircraft is only reapplies to transport planes, naval patrol bombers, all the big, all the heavy bomber airframes. Again, this only applies for air, naval bombers, carrier-based aircraft. This Nicholson and Bass focuses on buffing range, like that range isn't bad. But it requires us to own Northern Ireland. Our default Mayo is just a def for naval is just a default escort ship manufacturer. It's okay. Only affects screens. Attach them to a breeder factory, up submarines, but again we can't really do anything until we control Northern Ireland. And tanks. Again, I don't usually bother with these. Well, if I do, I'd say the Great Southern Railway Workshop is the best one because it just reduces production costs by 5%. Whereas Messrs. Thompson reduced by 3, but our armor and defense goes Not really a fan of that. Infantry tank designers. This might not be too bad. Yeah. Basically, I would probably use tanks more for supporting infantry rather than actually armor divisions. And yeah, this is just a default one. I'm not going to bother with that. The other thing we have here is um, Tom, Mr. Thompson for armored cars. I don't really bother with armored cars, even though Ireland did use them a lot in real life. Maybe you might find a use for them. Play in the Porsche. I don't know, that's up, that's up to you. Now, once you have, once you've got electronic and mechanical engineering, you can either go into radio, mechanical computing, or get support equipment ahead of time. It'll take 68 days, and at this point, we have um, 28 days. Basically, if you do get this before, if you do get support equipment, uh, research, research and support equipment at this point, you're kind of wasting this. You also aren't. Because the support technology bonus is applied to this or anything on, underneath this. Pers personally, I prefer to just... Or you could go into um, anti-air because this is probably one of the single best support units in the game. I have to do that now because we are also going to need to get anti-air to try and keep these guys clear. We've got 28 days left on army reform. Basic machine tools will be done. After that, you either go with concentrated or dispersed. I usually go with concentrated because we're far enough away from the front lines that if you are going with the allies, I'd go with concentrated because you're not likely to get bombed. If you're going to be going up against Britain, you might want to go with Dispersed, just to avoid that. Now, at this point, I can... I have two days left before army modernization is complete. You might as well just leave the slot blank for now, and then go straight, in, straight into it. So... 35 days, that means motorization will be done by then, and we can immediately, immediately start producing trucks or queuing them up at least. Now, for the actual Mayo, you can do this how you see fit. I tend to go with cheap with cheaper trucks where possible. Reliability doesn't matter too much. For support infantry, what four countries, which is what I'm going to be using them for. And then extra breakthrough, that's always nice to have for motorized. But this, this is the key thing motorized equipment uses less fuel. And then you might go with motorized later. I usually have a couple of divisions just to provide some mobility. 
Again, this was mechanized, which I don't bother with. And with construction one coming after that, I'd usually go into either fuel storage or metal foundries that road to 56 adds. We're going to need a lot of these later on. But, and apart from that, just keep let, let your power, power tick up. Now, I'd probably go with a chief of navy or a ground or a chief of air force over the chief of army because we can actually gain a little bit of xp already not much but we can get there and now that we have enough xp um very infantry equipment to do this this is one another way we can get some extra army xp it only gives us 10 in total but Add up the other thing here. I've never actually seen this work. This armor research, I mean, bother with tanks myself, but it gives you a, a once off research bonus. I think this some um, small arms research can actually, I think these two can happen multiple times, but this one is big. You can only do this once, but it means that motorized equipment will be five percent cheaper. Always work for Well, motorization effort is done. This is where I usually start going into the industrial buildup. So this will take 40 days to research. 39. Did I not do that? Now at this point, you're going to need to start cozying up to the Yanks. Once you get industrial buildup, you might want to go for state infrastructure just to get rid get that out of the way. And then or possibly go for military capacity to gain some factories for your artillery and your trucks and other things. But uh he's in here. Let's see. Let's see, America, would you like to invest in us? That's gonna take that's gonna take a while, but we also do need to have um every few of us has to be at least fifty gain this. Usually what I do is I go industrial build up, military capacity, investors, air industry expansion, or automobile industry, depending on where depending on how that out and try to go through the, as many of these as I can until the, the July 37 election happens. Once you get the um, begin industrial build up, I usually use the bonus on either construction two or concentrate two, depending on how that takes out. So we now afford B8. Let's see. Yeah, we have a LC for this, but it's not, not a one. Like, we're ahead of time, not by much. And we have a bonus for it. Generally, if, you, if you're ahead of time and you have a book for construction or any industry related stuff, and you have a bonus for it, you might as well, because it's with it because it'll pay itself off in the long run. Whereas um great industry one is not well away. Might as well just go with this now. Because once we get this we can gain another bonus and we get an extra fat free off map. And we now have enough to get okay, enough um to get any of these guys. Like I said, I usually go with the Chief of Navy. I think the next thing I'm gonna research is and usually research at this point would be basic submarines. 
Like the early submarine hull, don't bother with them. Let's go straight to the 1936 one. Now at this point, once you've we're basically wait waiting for all the for this to complete, then this, and then this, so we can actually get another another industrial buff. So you need to go with synthetic oil experiments or re extra research speed, radio, or one of these support equipment. I usually go with engineers. And then recon because I'm and then double back and get flamed or we already have this sniper team researched which this is going to make mean our recon units will or cavalry and motorized recon will buff our infantry these soft attack and heart attack really up to uh, really up to you though Another thing you could do at this point is start looking at better planes. Let's see, could go with them. Like I said, I'd go with multi-role aircraft designer. Now, using these myos do reduce some uh, your political power gain per day. So maybe limit this to one or two at a time until you get that until you get that debuff out. I suppose this is probably a good time to go into the um, divisions I'll be using. Generally, what I ha what I do with this um, starting infantry division is I have a single battalion of line artillery. You can see how much extra soft attack, attack and some breakthrough this adds. Again, we can't really afford this at the moment because we don't have any artillery. Keep them in a minute. The main division I tend to create is it's just a 10 with infantry division. And this is just a defensive unit with support artillery. This is not great. But it can but it can and do very well is just sit in one place and hold the line. Especially be around the coast coastline mountains. But well, you see what this support artillery does now. It significantly buffs soft attack, hard attack, defense, and breakthrough. Not that we really need it with these guys. Just by adding 12 artillery pieces on. It doesn't really matter what you call this. I just tend to call it the Guard de Walia or Home Guard. And once you have the um go into this, I also tend to add um engineers and then cavalry recon on to these guys. Maybe support anti air later. The regular infantry division, I tend to just use line artillery. It does cost a bit more, but I'm not gonna be using much of them. But you can see it does add some some penalties for movement and attack for each division. Sport companies don't have that at all. Makes some, they provide a lot of bang for your buck. Can't really show this right now, but usually I have sport anti air, engineers, motorized recon, and field hospitals. And then later I might go back and add um, logistics companies because this. Field anti vehicle kit that doubles their piercing and increases their heart attack and it reduces their supply as well, which is not to be sneezed at. But again, I can't really support that at the moment, I just need to wait. Once you get um, steel production, I'd recommend you at least start researching aluminium production. It's not how it should be spelled, but that's how the Yanks spell it. And then queue up. Maybe one or two, two of these, put them up here. They're above all these civilian factories because we're going to need steel. Now, as it stands, it looks like we might 
We won't have construction too ready for this first industry or concentrate industry too. So we can't get this yet. In this case, what I'd recommend is go straight into either automobile industry or state infrastructure and then the rest of these. You could go with extra naval dockyards to try and start building up our convoys to sell off, but it's up to you. We're basically just filling time until the end of July 37. And once you get the research bonus from advising American investors, I would immediately go into Concentrate Industry 2. Now we only have about 56 days left, this takes 81 days. So at this point, I would go into improved state infrastructure and then maybe this to get some extra military factories i've chosen to do to take um support equipment over trucks because we can gain small stockpile from this automobile industry and support equipment we need that for covert operations later i can't afford to create a spy agency yes but i will be able to once i get once i get this extra factory these extra two factories once you got aircraft engine two you probably i'd say go for basic small airframe once you get the early submarine hull go straight into the 1936 submarine hull it's going to be an improvement and you can keep use updating them as you go once you get this and the american industry you can probably stop and what was it you can stop improving relationships with the yanks because it's consuming a fair shot like a political power that we are short of you do also have the extra power you could motorize the army now but maybe leave that for later and you also might want to keep some to improve working conditions because our stability is it's okay but we could be better as soon as you get the chance to take the air industry expansion do so it only takes 55 days and it gives us two free military factories which i've chosen to go into both um motorized and civilian trains here later on you can probably sell some of these trains if you do take Northern Ireland, you're going to need them just to get supplies up to fast. But again, that's not a major issue. At this point, you might want to start also training a few more, a few of these divisions. I personally do the two batches of four to start with. Not great, but they're not great, but they'll they'll do for now. Plus, I'm going to cover the um. National character entries. These are added by Road to 56. Under law enforcement, if you're going democratic, you can either you can only take balanced approach or individual rights, both of which increase your stability. Firstly, I tend to go with this. I'm not sure what difference ideology drift defense really does. But it's doesn't really matter too much. Under the state's mandate. And if out of all of these, this one will reduce our democracy support. And we gain or we can just it takes us less time to justify war goals. Maybe that's something you want, maybe not. Now, divine inspiration reduces communism support and war support. But we can't have it while we're at war. And this requires us to either be anarchists or communists, which I haven't done that myself. So, recruitable population wouldn't be bad. So, that leaves either these two secular institutions, which that reduces our support for online by. And gives us extra research speed. 
will of the people reduces our fascism support but lowers supply consumption personally i think that alone makes this the best one if you're not going fascist legal status of women this will probably be one of the first you could get but i personally prefer to wait until if total equality enough for that it does cost 75 percent more but it, but it doubles the weekly manpower and population factor we could get over limited rights and it doesn't reduce our factory output by that much but again that only applies if you're not social order so hierarchy will lower our stability but we build um military factories and dockyards quicker and we gain to make our uh, manpower will be increased cultural norms is the one i usually go with because extra resource gain extra stability extra output those are all straight up buffs greater goods this might be helpful if you want if you want to get some extra population recruitable population and you want to build land forts quicker thing is we can only real port, rebuild forts within ireland revolutionary mines does increase our research speed a bit but we lose a bit of factory output and some stability nuclear production that's probably not worth it for us melting pot we build infrastructure and civilian factories quicker and we gain an extra po monthly population doubles which will add to our manpower firstly i usually go with cultural norms and then justification for war this requires more than 20 percent world tension i don't usually bother with any of these until i have a lot of power to spare like i don't know war goal time i i don't really bother with war goals like i tend to play defensively though the id the mobilization speed list wouldn't be bad the other one is i tend to go with is this for non-combat out of supply penalties that's helpful extra entrenchments always helpful if we're playing defensively thing is these two these this loss along with the state's mandate will increase our political power costs so you might want to hold off until you have a lot of that to spare now we've got the american industry we have a week or two of april may and june or we have to make a decision here so either go civilian factories or dockyard efforts or expand the air force Since I've just researched the basic fly shirt, you could always go for range improvements now or aircraft bombs. I'm not gonna bother creating designing any yet because I've barely any I've literally only just got the chief of the Air Force. Now, at this point I'm gonna go with the extra dockyards or dockyards at all. And with this, with this Mayo aircraft bosonal workshops, just buff everything to do with small and carrier planes. And then probably you can either go fighter specialization or bomber specialization. It's up, it's up to you. I'm, I found the small plate, the fighters work better because we can at least get those. You can send them over here over to the channel to lend some section that will add some more support and we're getting in towards the end of where this tutorial where i'm going to end this tutorial basically how to set up and start it i guess or do anything else i'm going to queue up a few of these uh anti-aircraft guns just to some naval supports 
I tend to do le less on the mountain provinces because that's a, that's already a pretty significantly hard attack. It's a recording until that interesting happens. So a lot of things have happened in a few in some very short time. Just completed the naval dockyard focus, aircraft bombs, and coming in. Day or so less than a week at this point we have a month to decide what we're doing you and there's nothing we can really do in this in this time you could go into civilian there's uh, or focus on sea dominance to get the get the bonuses i however i'm just going to try Saving some 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 political power by not selecting a focus that gives us a plus one extra political power per day. Now we have these basic submarines. If you really care about min max this, you can just go with torpedo attack to one. But the extra cost doesn't really matter too much. Historical submarines and there is a typo in Le Mave that should be M A B B H. And I usually just queue up ten of these, then just gonna go straight into convoys. And because we're, because I'm gonna go with this sea dominance, I may as well just go with. Later, I may as well just go with Fleece and Bean. It's not much use to us now, but the sub, but the reductions will be applied to these two submarine operation ones. Wrong with submarines now because I can do them immediately and they'll be useful throughout the game. Now, it's extra stuff from the from the mods. You can pretty much add whatever you these whenever you think it suits. That's not too far ahead for us to bother with. Naval support. Eh, no, this is really too useful. Maybe go into interwar artillery to buff the artillery or start researching engineers. And here's the ba here's the basic plane I'm gonna use. Four light machine guns and bomb locks. At the moment, we can't really afford much else. We haven't got anything else to add. So this is a very, very basic fighter. And then you have a couple of factories. We can't, we can't build them yet, but, but we'll have them. In fact, I would usually put them ahead of, of the anti-air. So our first two... Um, Two home guard divisions have been created. Yeah, perfect timing. So you can see that this will buff our artillery support and line soft attack and hard attack for a soft attack for um, infantry and motorized. Both will buff the special forces hard attack. Not that we're really good to bother with that. And it only costs 10 infantry equipment and gives us some extra movement speed. Like, it, it's basically so that these guys can spawn to attacks quicker. Whereas for our infantry division, I'm just going to go with motorized. You can see it adds a significant chunk of defense and breakthrough. Basically, this is a truck or a jeep with a heavy machine gun on the back. That's probably a, probably a bit more effective than a cavalry man. And about two or three weeks ago until the until the election. At this point you can probably start going to excavation or extra research speed or radio. Radio will allow us to get some extra things down here, here for radar, which we are going to need. You could also, that's a, 
a while away the survivability studies maybe go into range improvements to get drop tanks because these don't impact air defense at all and they don't weigh much and let's see i think i might just end this here yeah it's the last time all the save so at the moment i'm just banking political power once we gain once we get into these i think i might go in a foil this time while it is going to take us longer to get rid of this ira debuff it will buff our infantry attack and defense and we can actually get northern ireland out of it but once we get this go straight into reclaim treaty ports for another dockyard and extra factories and then this to gain extra factories and get rid of the trade war then what i would do would be push the constitution and the upper house this will unlock our police our silent workhorse this will give us the power to get him and then and then usually i'll go to replace him like a president disease wage and recognize the role of the church in extra power and stability so i've been at this for a while for a while now i'm gonna leave it there if you think if you think you'd like to see more of the more of this series or a follow-up to what happens after the election comments and i'll see you in the next one bye for now